Welcome back everyone. I recently landed this job called an instructional assistant intern for the first year engineering students at my university. I've taken this year off and I'm doing this full-time job and it actually counts towards part of my degree. So in today's video, I wanted to show you around to see what this job is like and see if maybe when you go to the school, you might want to do this job as well. Throughout this video, I'm gonna talk about what it's like doing the job, how I actually got the job, and a couple other things about this job. Let me know that you're looking for to watching this video by leaving it a like and let's kick it off with the morning. So I do pretty much the same thing every morning regardless of whether I'm teaching online or in person. I wake up bright and early at 6.30 a.m., pull myself begrudgingly out of my bed, and get greeted by the cat who wants her morning pets. I usually oblige and hang out with her for a few minutes and then I walk straight into the living room to do some exercise. So pretty much every morning I wake up and I do a workout. I found this super cool at home workout channel and all I do is I do a five minute warm up and then I pick a 10 or 15 minute video to work out to and that's pretty much what I do every single morning. And sorry, I have to be a bit quiet because my girlfriend is still sleeping. After my workout is done, I start the kettle to boil my water to drug myself with some coffee or tea and then I make myself some cereal or oatmeal depending on the season. So I've recently had some trouble in the mornings because I take this kettle and I boil water and then I go to the microwave and I put oatmeal in the microwave and because I live in an apartment that was made in the 1930s, we get a bit of a problem, which I'll show you right here. Look, there's a fuse box and actually I recently alleviated this problem by purchasing one of these bad boys from Amazon. This is a fuse breaker. So if you blow this fuse, you press the button and you break it like a regular breaker. But this one is still an old fuse. So if you overload the circuit by more than 15 amps, these are 15 amp fuses. Usually the ones in the kitchens are like 45. So this is a 15 amp fuse and if you blow it, you're screwed. And you have to pay 350 to get a new one. This one cost me $21 absolutely insane. Anyway, that's the joys of living in an apartment from the 1930s. And our drain just got clogged in the bathroom, so I have to buy a drain snake to try and figure that out. Anyway, there's a lot going on. Well, I'm gonna make my breakfast now. After I've finished my breakfast, I clumsily fit my way through my apartment's small doors, take my bike at the rear entrance, and down two flights of stairs because I'm on the third floor of a building with no elevators, and I usually leave myself about 17 minutes to get to the campus because that's how long Google Maps tells me it will take to get there. I spend a lot of time in these three rooms. There's this one, there's this one. The last one is on the fifth floor, which is always a lot of fun. This one is by far my favorite, but also the loudest. You may have noticed that I'm still wearing a mask, and that's because the virus exists. Also, sorry for the echo in here, it's kind of nuts. You may have noticed from this room that there are a lot of these robotic arms, and just behind them we have some Roombas that move around, and they're pretty cool. Both of these things were created by a company called Kwanzer, and they're quite expensive, ridiculously so, I might add. But basically the students get to mess around with these things and they can control them using a Raspberry Pi and Python code. So I run five labs on campus and two online, all of which are three hours long each. So if you do some quick maths, that comes out to 21 hours per week. So usually how things go is I'll meet my TA here a little bit before the class begins, and then I'll tell them to start letting the students in. Once everybody is seated, I give my slideshow. Once the slideshow is done, I explain what the activity is for today's lab, 
and then they can get going working in groups on figuring out the lab problems. While this is happening, I'm walking around talking to the students, helping them out if they have any questions, and obviously telling them about how cool my cat is. So that's pretty much how these labs go, and honestly, it's a pretty cool job. This course used to be four separate courses, but last year, the school combined it into one 13-credit course. I personally think this was a super cool idea because the students get to work on projects that deal with multiple different engineering principles. To give you guys an example of why I think this system is so much better, well, to start it off these things, the students get to work with freaking robotic arms. I never got to do anything like that in my first year. So now I get to hang out here for the next two weeks teaching students how to use these robotic arms, and honestly, I couldn't be happier. This stuff is super cool. I also took some videos throughout the weeks of what the students have managed to accomplish using these robotic arms. Some of them made some extremely clean code and made these things work like an absolute beauty, and others made the robots dance. So there was a lot of variety, and honestly, it was amazing to see. So as I mentioned earlier, this course is a 13 credit course, which is absolutely insane. The standard is three. As you might imagine, the team for this course is absolutely huge. There are 11 other people who are doing the exact same job as me, plus some extra TAs who instruct every once in a while. We have 70 plus TAs that help with marking and come into classes to assist myself and my 11 other IAIs. We have five to six different professors teaching lectures throughout the two terms, and we have over a thousand first year engineering students who all have to do the same thing every single week. So needless to say, it's been a massive headache, but I'm extremely proud of what people have been able to accomplish and how smoothly this course has been running so far. After the day at work, I usually head back home on my bike, I'll sometimes get some food on the way, or I'll just make lunch when I get home, and then I give myself some time to relax before I get into the evening activities. This can be a range of things. For a while it was watching Lucifer with my girlfriend, but we both kind of decided that the show took over our evenings, and I personally like to be productive all of the time. I'm a work for working kind of person, which means that once work is done, I like to do more work on my own, which might be making a YouTube video, working on my real estate courses, or doing assignments for one of the engineering classes that I'm taking right now, or even just playing a game of chess. I really enjoy the fact that I can do this YouTube side hustle in my free time and that you guys will actually show up and watch it, which is something that I definitely don't take for granted. I also like to do other creative work like getting involved in clubs at the school and playing guitar. Now all of these activities might not happen every evening and sometimes I'll just spend the whole evening preparing for work the next day or I'll give myself a screen time break and get some quality time with my girlfriend. The amazing thing is that most of the time I only do the things that I want to be doing which is something I'm very grateful for. I've recently rediscovered socializing after being in this pandemic for over a year now and it's honestly such a break from the never ending days of being an engineering student where you work from 7 a.m. to midnight every single day of the week. I've constantly hear my students talking about how busy they are, asking me or my teaching assistants how the hell we made it through first year, and pro tip, it was very difficult, it sucked, um, but you just have to be really good at managing your time and that's how you get through it. There's a lot of social life sacrifice that comes with engineering, um, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that you have to struggle the entire time. Um, and if you're struggling with other people, it can make your struggles feel more meaningful and you can help each other out and, you know, kind of enjoy the pain together. It definitely makes it a lot easier. That is something I did not do in my first year and I sincerely regret not doing that. I should have had a study group or even just a friend group to study with. And I think that would have made my life a lot better. Now, some of you might be wondering how I managed to land this job in the first place, and the answer is that I applied the traditional way. I had some good stuff on my resume, things related to coding in Python and experience with teaching, working as a lifeguard. Then I did a five minute pitch explaining my skills and I was offered the position for eight months. Now, I'm beginning to realize that I have to start applying for summer jobs again because I need 12 months of co-op work experience to graduate with a degree that I want. So the stress is beginning to run high again. And in all honesty, I was kind of hoping for a 12 month position at least, uh, but on the flip side, at least I get to work somewhere new and try something in a different field, maybe software or accounting, and it could lead to a full-time job once I graduate. So if I continue to choose with engineering, that would be cool but I'm looking more towards accounting and finance related roles. So you're probably also wondering how many jobs did I have to apply to before I landed this one? And the answer is that I applied to about 25 jobs. I painstakingly applied in third year and I had four 
interviews in total. So overall, not too bad for applying to 25 jobs. I spent about an hour for each and every application, and I really, really tried to make a really good resume, a really good cover letter. And I think that showed because of the ratio of jobs to interviews that I got. I'm starting to get the feeling that my future job hunt won't be as easy, but I'm also kind of in the mindset now that I'm not going to apply the traditional way anymore because it just takes way too much time. So I have a couple people now that I want to email and I'm going to send out emails like cold emails to a few people and see if they have any related work experience that I can get. And hopefully by doing that, I will actually land a job without too much pain in my butt, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So that about does it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched it all the way through, I just wanted to say thank you. I really appreciate you. Um, and if you liked the video, don't forget to leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thanks again. Peace.